Welcome to Miss Trini Treats. I'm Missy and today I am sharing how I made this black velvet Jack Skellington cake with the Pumpkin King sitting on top watching over Halloween Town. Anybody that knows me knows that I am a huge fan of the Nightmare Before Christmas movie. So much so that two years ago I created this Jack Skellington Oreo Cream Pie. Last year it was these Nightmare Before Christmas Cupcakes and this watercolor inspired cake with Jack and Sally on top. For today, I am using Wilton's Dress Cake Mold and a delicious black velvet cake recipe to bring you this cake. First, we are creating his bat tie because it's going to take a couple of days to harden completely. I cut out the shape of the bow tie with black gum paste and then cut out sort of like two V's per side to create three separate lines on either side. I created a bat head and stuck it directly in the center of his tie, added some eyes, some thin snaked out pieces of white fondant, and set that aside to harden for a couple of days. To start, you're going to need to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Next, using a medium sized bowl, whisk your egg whites until soft peaks form, about two minutes and in a separate medium sized bowl, sift together your flour and your cornstarch. To sift my cocoa powder and to give accurate measurements for tablespoons without the lumps that are inside it, I sifted the cocoa powder into a cup first and then scooped out my three tablespoons. To be extra sure that there was no clumps that formed again, I just poured it into my sifter once more as I am adding it to the mix. Next was my salt and baking soda. I whisked these together until combined and put that aside as well. With my stand mixer fitted with the paddle attachment, I poured in my sugar, added my butter, and then turned it up to medium speed until my mixture became light and fluffy and that took about two to three minutes. I added my veggie oil and beat again until it was completely incorporated. Add your vanilla extract, vinegar, your egg yolks, and food coloring and beat again on medium speed until everything is combined. I used my splash guard here so I didn't have any black batter flying out everywhere, all over the place, all over me. Turn your mixer down to low and add your dry mix and your buttermilk in three parts. So first, one third of your dry ingredients mixed together, half of your buttermilk mixed together, half of your dry mixed together, the rest of your buttermilk mixed together, and then the rest of your dry and then mix together. Once mixed, gently fold in your egg white mixture with a spatula. I sprayed my cake pan with baking spray and poured in my batter. I made a second batch of this cake but halved the ingredients so I was able to fill my cake mold almost all the way to the top. I placed this in the oven and baked for about two hours or until a toothpick comes out clean. I know two hours sounds like a long time to bake a cake, but using this cake mold, it does take quite a bit more time than the average cake pan because there is more batter in this cake mold than in the standard cake pan. So it's gonna take more time to bake all the way through. Once my cake had completely cooled, I crumb coated and covered my cake with black fondant. I bought this doll on clearance a while back, so that's why I'm using a girl doll for Jack. If you would prefer using a boy doll, that is totally up to you, but I thought that this doll worked out just fine. 
I gave this Barbie a pixie cut and then covered her head with white fondant, forming it into sort of a ball shape to mimic Jack's head. Her neck needed to be covered as well, so I added a strip of white and blended the scene together with the head. For the eyes, I pressed in where I wanted them with my fingers and then shaped them with my ball tool. I marked his nostrils and mouth and began working on the black fondant pieces. I am using my tip number 12 to pop out two circles for the eyes and then I stretch them just a little bit to make them more of an oblong look. And then place some thin rolled out strips of fondant to create the hollow of the nostrils and his mouth. And then adhere these with some piping gel. I pushed the doll into the center of the cake and began working on his clothes. We are first going to create the white portion of his shirt. I did this with a little white triangular piece of fondant attaching it with some more piping gel. For his jacket, I applied two strips of black fondant, cutting them down at the waist. I then applied them with some piping gel, pulling back the collar and overlapping the two sides at the front at the waist. I used two more strips to make the pants, cutting them down to stop at the top of the cake. Now we're going to turn him around to work on his back. I wanted his jacket to drape down the back of the cape, so I cut a piece about as wide as his shoulders and then made the edges sort of jagged. I adhered it to his back and his sides with piping gel and began wrapping the arms with strips to make the sleeves. Now I know this is getting a little confusing, so I'll link up a great Ken doll jacket pattern that I used with my Beauty and the Beast dancing doll cakes. I wanted Jack to have more of an expression, so I arched some white snaked out fondant over each eye hollow. To make his bony hands, I pressed white fondant onto each of the hands to mark the finger placement and then cut at those lines. Because I wanted them to be long and bony, I overextend the lines and then cut the tips at an angle to make them pointier. I also pinched each of the fingers for a more of a bony texture instead of just straight edges. I used my food color marker to create the joints and then stuck them to the top of each hand of the Barbie with piping gel. So I noticed that you could still see Barbie's hand underneath Jack's. It was just the sides, just a little bit, and it didn't bother me any, but I know that some of you it may bother, so if you want, you can cover the hands beforehand. That was kind of funny. <laughs> you can cover the hands beforehand with some white fondant and then place Jack's hand over the top. I applied thin strips of white fondant onto his jacket and began working on the landscape. I created the moon using a round cookie cutter and then created the iconic hill by cutting a stray edge and then cutting under that edge, widening and curving as I go all the way down. I applied it to the front of the cake and then moved on to creating smaller hills along the bottom edge of the cake all the way around. For the legs, I rolled out black fondant, tapering one end and cutting it down to size. After I had decided that the first one was perfect, I made another one identical to that one and lined them up in front of where each of the Barbie legs were standing and applied them with piping gel. I added two black shoes with a toothpick and some piping gel. At this point, if you want, you can add the same white strips of fondant that you used on his bow tie and on his jacket to add them on the pants as well and then went to work on the jack-lanterns and the pumpkins. To make these, all I did was roll out some orange fondant into a ball and then cut them in half. I made indents on the rounded side and then added some little yellow triangles and a jagged mouth to make the jack-lanterns. I stuck those, some extra pumpkins, the fence, and gravestones, and moved on to my back. I used the large end of my tip number 12 to cut along the edge of my fondant and then flip the tip over to cut out three more dips. And then I flipped over the fondant to make one more dip at the top. Voila! Bats! I applied those to the moon, stuck the tie just under his neck, and our black velvet Jack Skellington cake is done. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. 
If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button. If you make this treat, please hashtag me at Miss Trendy Treats. And I'll see you guys next week when we make another trendy treat together. Bye-bye, guys.